Hi, I'm Caitlin and this is Book Chats and these are the books that I read in May. I flew like on a plane five times in the month of May, which like I read great on airplanes. I ended up reading 12 books in May. I'm not doing these in any particular order, like it's not in the order I read them, it's just kind of in the order I wrote them down on my page and how I organized them there. First there's three books that I read very quickly. I don't know if I've told you guys this, but I kind of have a thing where when I'm like stressed or traveling or like just feel like it, I read NASCAR Harlequins. And I specifically read NASCAR Harlequins that I bought from my old, like, like old library NASCAR Harlequins. So I don't even feel bad when I like spill a crap ton of water on them and warp the pages. And I like make comments in the margins while I'm reading. I read this one on a flight I was on. It's One Track Mind by Bethany Campbell. I think I also read it a little bit the night before the flight because I was, you know, trying to avoid packing because that's, that's what I do. You might see more of these pop up in my wrap-ups, probably when I'm stressed or traveling. It's pretty much how it is. I also read earlier in the month Poisoned Apples by Christine Hepperman. This is a book of poetry that is all around kind of the central theme of um, fairy tales and folktale kind of retellings and kind of the beauty standards and pressures of that teenage girls feel. And I thought that it was an interesting concept to weave those two together. I thought it was pretty well executed. There's beautiful pictures throughout the book. I borrowed my friend's copy, so I gave it back to her so I can't show it to you here. But if that sounds like an interesting concept to you, you should definitely check it out. And I also read Through the Woods by Emily Carroll, which was a quick read because it's a graphic novel. I have been following Emily Carroll for a couple of years online now. I love her illustration style. And I was hoping that this would be kind of the book that scared me for my pop sugar challenge. But as you'll find out later, I did crappy on my pop sugar challenge this month and this unfortunately although it was very creepy and very pretty did not actually scare me because the stories were more of like unreal folk tales to me than they were anything that I could like think of in reality. I read three nonfiction books this month and they were all very slow reads. The first one was The Hard Truth About Soft Skills by Peggy Klaus. I read this on my ebook, on my Kindle as an ebook, and I have been reading it since February. So it's just taken me a while to get through it. It's actually pretty short and fairly snappy. It's little like bits of advice about work and the workplace and how to interact there. But I feel like it's more practical for people who are currently in their careers and I'm still working on that and trying to kind of find my place. So it took me a while to read it and I finally finished it because I was like, I will finish this. But I did think it was interesting, had interesting tidbits and I do want to read more by Peggy Klaus. Then I listened to on audio Ghetto Side by Jill Lavoie. I waited for this for months at the library to come in on overdrive and then it came in and I started listening to it and it was like, oh my gosh, I don't like this woman's voice at all as a narrator. I actually found myself being like, where's my vocal fry? I need more vo vocal fry. I also, definitely this book for me was described the wrong way. Someone recommended it to me and described it as like serial in book form, which if you don't know about serial, it's an awesome podcast that is like a true crime podcast that is both horrifying and fascinating at the same time. Anyway, Ghetto Side is about black on black violence in LA and it is not the same as Serial and it doesn't explore things the same way Serial does. And I think it's very interesting and valuable, but I was definitely let down by that. I was definitely um, let down by the narrator for the audiobook. I actually took Jen from Today and Jen's Library's advice and I sped the audio up a little bit and it got a lot more bearable after that. And also I like was had like three or four hours left to listen and then it was like expiring in six hours and it was like midnight and so I was like okay I'm just gonna like listen to this before I go to bed so the last three hours I didn't listen to super well and so I definitely think that I'm gonna reread this at some point on paper before I make a final judgment but I was actually pretty disappointed in it. The final nonfiction book I read of the month was The Fangirl's Guide to the Galaxy by Sam Maggs. I did a full review on that so I'm gonna link that up above in a little card but I wanted to mention there will still be a giveaway for this copy of this book going on on my friend's blog where I reviewed it in a written review. So I will put a link in the doobly-doo and please do enter. And then there were three books that I kind of consider my traveling reads because I read them while I was on a trip to New Jersey with my family. We were there for a regatta and I also got to meet my pen pal, Alex! 
yes shout out so those three books were Angel Fall by Susan E. I really enjoyed this book. I know that I'm late to this party. I know that a ton of people have read it before me and really enjoyed it, but I'm not really like an angel book reader. And I was like, I, just putting it off, putting it off. And then my book twin, who like has the same taste in books as me, she saw that I checked out a library. She was like, Angel Fall. So I was like, okay, I'll take it on this trip with me. And after I hit the part where the angels are introduced, I was just totally hooked. There's a lot of like real survival stuff going on. There's some like crazy twists that happen and just the world building and the fact that she's trying to create this such such an ambitious world that's still grounded in our world is so fascinating to me and I'm very excited to continue with this series. Then I read Damsel Distress by Kelsey Mack or Kelsey Mackey. I'm not sure how her name is pronounced which is bad because I think that she is a booktuber and so I should have looked it up. Sorry, Kelsey. I had really mixed feelings about this book. In fact, I might talk about it later in conjunction with some other kind of fairy tale things in media. It is basically like the main character thinks of herself as the ugly stepsister to her, you know, stepsister. And she deals, it's difficult because she deals a lot with like depression and some anxiety issues. And you are really in the first person with her in those. And kind of wallowing in them and it's hard to read that. But one thing I did appreciate about the book is I felt like it did not suffer from that problem where if these two characters just talk to each other everything would be fixed. Like the characters do talk to each other and and uh, have communication that's fairly good. I do want to mention uh, with Damsel of Distress that there's kind of this like mixed media experiment going on where there's like picture illustrations in the book and then there's like QR codes and it'll take you to like a song and it's like a really interesting concept but I just didn't it didn't work for me but I definitely think it is a book that is ripe for discussion. Then the third book I read kind of on that trip was Not in the Script by Amy Finnegan. This is like a sweet and conventional contemporary YA romance that had surprisingly interesting kind of industry portrayal and tidbits. It's set in kind of the television and film industry and there were some really interesting elements there with life on set and different things and I, I think that the author maybe has a relative who works in the industry so maybe that's where she got her information. But I definitely enjoyed it, thought it was fluffy and lighthearted and what I wanted to read at that point in, in the month. I just have a soft spot in my heart for like these Hollywood kind of stories. The last three books of the month are kind of like my miscellaneous category, but they're also books that I gave four stars to each of. First one I read in the month of these three was The Naked Mole Rat Letters by Mary Amato. I really liked it. It has a very strong narrator and a very strong voice. It has a great use of email, which is always tricky in a book to use and I also enjoyed the tone. Uh, it's definitely a middle grade book so like be aware it's middle grade but I read it quickly. I loved it and I gave it to a friend of mine who teaches. Then I read Longborn by Joe Baker. I really enjoyed Longborn. I listened to it on audio. It was a great audio book and it was just a great book. Uh, it's I don't read a ton of adult books, partly because if they're disappointing, they're so disappointing. But when they work, they really work, and this one really worked. It allowed me to see familiar characters and familiar like settings and events in a whole new light because it's actually set uh, among the servants of Longbourn, which is the house that the Bennets live in in Pride and Prejudice. So the Bennets, you know, come and go in the story, and Darcy makes some appearances, and you know, Wickham makes some appearances. But the story is really about the servants and how their lives are and how their lives are affected by what's going on you know in the upper house but really their lives are their own and any fans of Pride and Prejudice should read this book definitely it is adult though be aware the last very last book I read of the month I finished it six minutes before midnight on May 31st was Listen Slowly by Tan Ha Lai I hope I said that right. I just listened to it again on audio before, I listened to this on audio, and I just listened to that name again on audio before I made this video. This book was recommended to me by my younger sister. Heard about it on NPR and recommended it to me. It's the author's second book, but it's her first prose novel. It was so great. It is about a girl who is your typical California teenager and she's got kind of this, it has kind of this Judy Bloom sensibility about capturing kind of American teenagers but then part of that is like she shipped to Vietnam with her grandmother because her parents and grand grandparents are from Vietnam and she is accompanying her grandmother 
on this trip. Her grandmother is trying to find out what happened to her husband, who was captured during the Vietnam War. And her parents want her to kind of get in touch with her roots and learn more about her heritage. And so it's just a great look at these dual cultures, straddling two cultures, um, learning about different cultures, but already having some background in them. I especially enjoy listening to an audio because there was quite a lot actually about pronunciation and there were some Vietnamese in it. And there was some like emphasis, um, you know, where they were talking about diacritical marks and other elements of pronunciation. And I don't know if I would have gotten that from the written page. I don't know what it looks like on the written page because I just listened to it on audio, but I am like really terrible with pronunciation. I often pronounce things weirdly, especially if I've only ever seen them on paper, and I don't know how to interpret diacritical marks. It was really helpful to hear it on audio. I really enjoyed being able to listen to it that way. I really think it added to the experience for me personally. All right, here's where I'm going to wrap everything up, but first, my favorite book of the month. Oh my goodness. It was a really good month for books, guys. Really good. Top notch. You know, I think it was probably Angel Fall by Susan E. just because I'm so excited to continue on in that, but I really enjoyed both Longborn and Listen Slowly, but they were both, you know, standalone, so it doesn't carry the same kind of enjoyment forward. The Goodreads Reading Challenge. I challenged myself to read 132 books this year, uh, and at the end of April, I had read 41. I read another 12 books in May, so that's 53 of 132 total. I'm doing pretty well on this goal. I'm one behind according to Goodreads right now, but I am totally working on it. I got my Pop Sugar Challenge. I had read 18 books out of 50 for the Pop Sugar Challenge last month, and I read only one this month that counted. I am now one book behind also. On my pop sugar challenge so I need to like buckle down and read some of these longer and harder books that I'm hoping to do and then for my debut author challenge I talked about this a lot in my top five lens I already talked about debut novels unfortunately I have not finished any debut books from this year that are middle grade young adult or new adult since the very first one I finished way back in I think February so zero for the month I'm still at one of 12. I'm not too too worried about this because I'm actually currently reading two of them and I have another that just popped up uh, available on my Kindle and I'm excited to maybe start that one. The only books I'm currently reading right now are debut books because I'm like must not get behind and also there's some books with great buzz that I really want to be able to talk about with my friends. So hopefully I will catch up in one or all of these goals in the next month in June and then hopefully on Friday I can get a giveaway up because I do want to do a giveaway to celebrate making 100 followers which I'm now at 130. Thank you so much guys. I am so honored by all of you who choose to follow me. Thanks so much for watching. Oh questions. <laughs> let me know how May went for you on your reading goals and also totally let me know if you read more or less in the summer because the summer is totally approaching I definitely think I might read less so let me know in the comments and I will talk to you later bye